So the first one is called the pullback strategy. And more or less, as you get more experience with trading, you'll notice that almost all your trades is technically a pullback entry. And it is very simple. Um, so you pretty much are just, once you identify support and resistance, you are waiting for a retest of a break of that support or that resistance to enter your trade. So an example is looking at a bullish example, say we have an uptrend and we missed the first run up. But once we came to a resistance that we drew with our zone, price rejected, came back, consolidated a little bit before continuing back up and breaking that resistance. So once price breaks above that resistance, we can now look to qualify a trade at that previous rejection that we had to the left. So knowing that that resistance, old resistance is now support, we can look to buy the retest once it comes back down to retest the top. You don't wanna buy up here, you don't wanna chase it. You wanna wait for the price to pull back because I promise you, nine times out of 10, it always does. And if you have FOMO and you chase it, you're more likely gonna get stopped out and buy the high. And when you should have waited for it to come back and retest this, the old resistance new support, and you'll notice that price more or less is gonna hold and then it's gonna take off without you because you just got stopped out at the top. So you wanna buy in that zone with a stop below there because as a bullish market structure is making higher lows and higher highs, we should continue in that direction. We shouldn't break, come down and test the new support and break that because otherwise that means the trade is not gonna work and we wanna get out of it. So on the flip side, we have a bearish market structure. So for the pullback, let's say we come down to a support and we bounce off it just slightly, consolidate, then we rip through it on the next leg down because there are a lot of sellers. And now that old support is now new resistance and we'll look for a pullback retest to enter short once it comes back and hits that new resistance with, you wanna sell inside that zone and we wanna put we don't want to sell once it breaks towards the low. We want to wait for a retest. This is super key. You don't want to chase it, like I said, on the long trade. You don't want to buy the top. And the same with the short. You don't want to sell the bottom. You want to wait for price to come back and test the new resistance. So you want to sell in that shaded zone. Put a stop above the previous support, the low that previously held. And then you want to look for a continuation to the downside. So let's apply what we just talked about for a bullish pullback example. So you know, you can notice that price is in a downtrend until the double bottom, which is right there. I have it shaded in a green rectangle. And we didn't realize that was going to happen until the first bounce on the left here. Once we saw that bounce, we can say, okay, that is support. So we would have our zone drawn there. We would already have these two lines drawn because those are our resistances based on the previous price action. And you could obviously, instead of these horizontal lines, you can draw a zone similar to the one on the bottom. And once we see that price comes back into the zone again, it actually bounces. And then what does it do? After it bounces, it forms a higher low. So at this point, I'm not looking to go short anymore because I'm looking for a at least a move up to test that resistance, potentially to short. But if we break above there, I'm looking for a long trade because momentum has shifted because that was a strong double bottom pattern. We tried to push through, we made a little bit lower low, but we pushed up, made a higher low, and now we're actually breaking above resistance on strong volume and we're consolidating and holding on the old resistance new support. So when I zoom in on this candle, that red doji looking candle is a reversal candle right on support. So when I see that type of signal, I'm looking to get long because that means there's a fight at that level and there's a low risk, high reward entry right there. You don't have to have a wide stop on this one to catch the next move that's coming back up. So the entry should actually be 
have it on the tick chart because this is the five minute on the left and the 512 tick chart on the right because you can see the market structure better on the right because it's based on the number of trades that are being taken have, that have been placed so i typically like to enter about midway in the zone with a stop like a point or two below the zone which is for es and nasdaq is very similar and then once we enter this trade we get filled the first target that we're looking for is right to the top, back to the top of that consolidation, which is a little bit more than 2R. That would be our first target. And then if you have any runners, of course, you would just trail it as the price continues to rip higher and make higher highs and higher lows. So let's look at a bearish pullback strategy example. So it's clear that price is in an uptrend on the left until lower highs start to form. And this is the NASDAQ. This was a couple days ago, I think, or at least last week. So you can see the lower highs forming there. We actually broke down. Let me draw a little bit of a line here. So I'd be looking for after this price rebounded here, came back, retested that support in this area that should have held and it went up and it rejected and made a lower high and sold off. Okay, so at that point, market structure shifted from bullish to bearish. We made a lower high and we're breaking structure to the left. The bearish structure is breaking down. So now we should be looking for a short trade. So as price action develops, we can see that we had another lower high form back in that zone that we created after we had made the original lower high. So that acts as resistance now. So we'd be looking for a short somewhere in that area. And then you can see once price actually hits that area, it sells off quite a bit, breaks pretty much all support to the left, broke that low, which I believe was the market open candle, yep, and then came back up, made another lower high. So where would we enter this trade? So yep, price breaks strong support on increased volume, so that's what I'd be looking for as well. That mean that really confirms the short. So as price dumped through support, we saw some serious volume increase. So once we see the price come back up to the previous support and is now resistance, so you can see here, this area right here is resistance. You don't wanna see price get back above these lows, these highs over here. And you can more or less see once this green candle formed where I have the entry circled right here, you're more or less going to enter once that candle closes right there. Because you can see there's like there's not that much volume on that candle. If I go all the way down there. And we don't want to clear the highs of these candles over here. That's why the stop is right there. So once we enter that trade, where is our target? The first target is back because you want to pay yourself first. You don't want to go for all these extreme targets initially. You want to pay yourself a little first. Typically, I like to get paid two, three hour first, sometimes less just to get on the board. But the first nice target here could have even been the opening range, like the low of the first five minute candle on the NASDAQ here. But we, for this example, I would actually have taken profit right at that first, that second wick on that reversal candle. And then let's look for another trade. There's quite a few nice trading examples in this uh, particular chart. And you can see really quick as price continued lower, there's an increase in volume. So that confirms the bear sentiment. So the bulls are definitely not showing up this day. Right now, we'd be looking for another, another retest of old support and new resistance. And that's exactly what we get towards the end of the day, right around noon Pacific Standard Time, which is an hour before the market closes. We got another retest to test uh, the resistance. And it's pretty clear um, where that level is based on the price action on the left. And we would typically like to enter, actually have a line there at 87 and three quarters. So that would actually have been my entry. And I would put my stop about 10 points, eight to 10 points higher from there initially and then move it down 
probably just the high of that candle once I see the trade working, just to decrease the risk quite a bit. And then just trail down until the first profit target is hit again, uh, the same profit target as the first trade, just to get paid a little bit. And you can see that price actually created a bear flag here. So if you recognize that, you could actually add it to your position because you can see here, this was support and it broke right through there. This little box here, what consolidation was support before and it broke right through it, came back up, retested, you could have added to your position for the continuation lower. At least if you missed this entry, you could have taken this entry with an even tighter stop after the trend, the move down was confirmed. And second target would be the lower wick of that first reversal candle. And then if you have any more contracts at that point, just be trailing it until you get until you get trailed out. Or if you want to just take profit. Either way, you're locked in a good trade. 